Welcome back to Napoleon Total War with this Pike and Shot mod. Last time around we managed to take uh, Hessen Kessel. However, as you might note here, I am currently in control of it and it's not my vassal. Well, as it does happen with this mod, it crashed on the end turn. So I decided to go back, roll it back, and it is... Um, I always do this actually for all my mods, but it is advised to save after each turn. Uh, so when I, I usually do that anyways because it's good to have that when you're uh, recording and you know if you want to move back or for crashes or, and whatnot you need to possibly change. Anyways, the change I made was I did the battle again and this time around um, I captured the place, occupied it, rather than uh, put it as a vassal. It probably, even though I would have liked to have like tons of vassals and like, you know, the mess of the Holy Roman Empire, I, do, I mean, it would have been a mess in a bad way rather than a good way. I don't know if there's a good way, but I, I I think I would have liked it to see the sort of the the mess of all these small children nation, uh, you know, um, with all their stuff out there controlled by the one father state, uh, the Austrians and the emperor. Um, but that unfortunately is not the case right here. So we have gone ahead and taken it, and uh, yes. With that, I've also gone ahead and done a few extra turns, so we are currently actually able with the army is stationed right over here and we're going to, within quotation marks of course, liberate the Balkans. I'm sure the Austrians going into Bel Austrians going into Belgrade, oh, you know, never any problem there, right? And so, um, this is an uh, outer resolve if I ever saw one. Um, suspiciously high enough chance for them, even though their troops are absolutely shit, but they do have quite a high number of them. Um, but yeah, that's an outer resolve. We lost 551 men. It would be interesting if, um, just for um, sake of um, continuity, if the outer resolve would add on a few friendly fires as well. Uh, I don't manage to get through any battle without it. Um, nothing interesting to be said there. And we're gonna peacefully occupy. Um, the region doesn't have any wealth to begin with, as we can see here, and as I could already tell from the area, but no, you know, public order is, even if I loot them, they're still happy. But, you know, the predicted wealth, it's better not to. And, as I said, we were, you know, it's, it's uh, sort of stands, once you keep calm, you're being liberated. We do have a supply warehouse. And we're going to start the iron mine. So we get really good de replenishment. So I might just continue, continue on against the Ottomans. They don't have that many troops to be concerned about um, unless this army is gonna march on us. We do have the fort even though in the outer soul it was completely demolished. It's gonna take four turns to build that up. But I'm sure my army can hold that. Um, other than that we should um, I'm probably going to do a few more in turns because I want to replenish these. And unlike down there, the replenishment rate here is pretty poor. Now, it is going to increase once I'm able to build up to the cantonment, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, but we are about five turns away from actually achieving that technology. Also, it's going to allow me to get a lot of different uh, mercenaries, as we can see here. But it will allow me to recruit a lot of these pikemen um, that I currently can't recruit, like these, the Kaiserlich uh, Pikinia, which I can't recruit right now. Also, uh, Österreich is in uh, line infantry regiment, 
and a few others. Actually, a lot of units in this army, except for the matchlock, the generic matchlock infantry. But I'll try to uh, build these up a little bit more. Uh, pikes are going to be very useful, I imagine, as we go against this army right here. So, as just to remind you, the idea then is to attack this army and bring them out of the fort so we don't have the kind of the same fight as we had in uh, Castle, Hessen Castle. Uh, the thing though is, I actually tried when I redid had to redo it to capture it again. I did one where the I forced the enemy to sally forth out of the castle and it was quite difficult actually because there's a there's a big difference when you're able to take on the pikemen piecemeal coming out of a fort compared to when they're all kind of lined up and ready and moving against you. Um, so it actually made the battle harder even though I uh, were able to kill a few of them. What we could do is, of course, Pappenheim uh, could be moved up. What is his replenishment? Captured supply wagon. But he does have... He's, he's both captured supply wagon and short on supply. Um, hopefully that will change. But what I could do is I could start marching him up here and he could join in this fight as well. I oh, of course... The um, stupid Bavarians is blocking this bridge. They are, although I, it makes sense that they're blocking the bridge because they are actually currently at war with the Saxons, I believe. Yes, they are. Um, anything else I need to go through here? Oh yes, Portugal is free. I complete. Oh yeah, there's a there's massive changes on the campaign map. So let's well, massive. Uh, Portugal is free. The uh, Union has broken up. Broken up. Um, and then there was also rebellions, more rebellions. Uh, before we only had the uh, rebellion in Toulouse. But now we have a rebellion in Gibraltar, which the British are, or the English, are sending a troop to deal with. I think they started with it. Um, but I'm not sure. They are on their way anyways, somewhere, to attack someone. And I imagine it's going here. Um, but I'm not sure. Maybe this was the Spanish holding. Uh, then also these islands out here. The Balearic Islands. And Sicily. Sicily, I'm actually kind of interested in taking. That would be nice. Because we would get another port in the Mediterranean. So we could protect our, um, our trade a lot better. So I'm thinking, we're gonna. God damn it! I need just musketeers, and then these pikes. I kind of want to. It's my OCD. Always want to match the different types of units in the same army, and kind of build standardized armies. So I all wherever I am on the battle or wherever I am on the battle map, I know that I have an army that has like four archers, uh, t two cannons and uh, three cavalry or whatever. So uh, wherever I am, I'm basically playing with the same setup. Um, and I also kind of want... Um, well, although sometimes it's not, it's cool for sort of roleplay reasons to have like the Italian army where we instead have, you know, a, a battalion of Italian troops or a brigade of Italian troops. Um, but yeah, we're recruiting a lot of troops there. Probably gonna need some cavalry, could get pistoliers, lancers from Bohemia possibly. Um, one thing that I will do now, the the Balkans or Belgrade has been taken, is to change Zagreb, Croatia. We're gonna change the main structure here from a military barracks to a governor's residence. It will be making more money of this province, so it'll be it'll be now structured more to a money province uh, rather than a military one, because this one will be the frontier against the Ottomans in, against our enemies. So that's how we're going to do that. I do actually have... Oh, I have Cossacks here. We can send them down. We cannot have an army here. Um, 
need a general for it and a little bit more uh, troops and then we could send that to Sicily I hope the Spanish will agree that I can take it otherwise what I could do is I could trade it with the Spanish against Cleves and Cleves mark because that is one of our targets of my missions that I've been issued that we should hold that but currently the Spanish hold it we get 5,000 gold and some lowland Scots. And I think that's brought you up to date with everything. So let's let the end turns roll on and then march on the Hanoverians. The Polish-Swedish War, unable to accomplish his goals during... Well, you can read it, uh, you can pause it and read it if you want. And then would that would be kind of the second half, and that would be the end of it. So uh, the Swedes are declaring war on Poland. I believe this picture might be from uh, when you liberate Poland in normal Napoleon. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, ta 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 ta. Uh, tide turn further in 16 when Polish reinforcements inflicted multiple defeats on Sweden. Right, so it could be that Poland will ask me to declare war on Sweden now. Uh, I'm actually siphoning off quite a lot of money from the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. Um, they want usually they want me to declare war on every one of uh, the nations they are at war with. And then these nations ask me for peace, uh, and everyone just offers me money. So Transylvania offers me, you know, a thousand gold for peace. Then Poland gives me three thousand to declare war on and, and them again, and it goes like that back and forth constantly. Um, so it's a good way of <laughs> it's a it's a good way to get money. The, it looks like the Ottomans have moved away. The, the problem here is that there's no center real close by except Transylvania. So I wonder if I should actually go in there or if I should just keep this army here. It's a waste of money having this perfect army sitting here. Mm, at the same time though, like there's no good road to march on to get there. Plus it's January so we got winter going on. But I think I'm going to risk it. I mean, we... This was super easy to take over. And we can hope we can do that again. So we're going to march against the vampires. And the army is coming along here. Building a little bit more cannons. Should get the Cossacks back. Let's see, was my navy ready? We got some trade ships actually that can stand by and we can bring them in to um, aid. At the same time these should combine over here. I want to see what kind of rebel force they have out here. Okay so the Spanish are already here. Weak galleon with only 12 cannons on it. Not much of an army, it's 10 stack. And clearly the rebels aren't doing that well either. And the, uh, they're tanking the economy. But it would be a nice holding. Question is if the Spanish would let me hold on to it. Or if they would uh, demand it back. Uh, at the same time, right now, we're a little bit better, but I think uh, since it's winter, I don't want to march through winter. So uh, once, as soon as we get the uh, next year's campaigning se season starting uh, with spring, then is when we'll make our move on the Hanoverians. Uh, what is the smoke going on here? What is that? Rebellion? Hmm, there's rebellions. I like that. I can swoop in and take the province then if the Spanish fail to hold it. Ah, uh, pretty pitiful army. Only pikes. Is there anything else? No. Um, 
And no trade like that. We're moving in. Ah, yes. We got a little event going on. Kippa und Vippa. Which basically is uh, inflation. Something we should all be quite uh, accustomed to right now. Or it's topical, I should say. To talk about inflation right now. This inflation is a little bit different than the current inflation going on right now. In that this one is created by... I, try, I read up a little bit on it on Wikipedia. And basically what it was was that they needed, of course, a lot of money for the Thirty Years' War to buy, to pay for troops and whatnot. And so what they did was, is, say, Hessen Kessel then, they, you know, they trade with uh, Cleavesmark, and they get money pr mi that is minted there, of course, because when they buy it, they get, they get money from there. And then they take that money, they melt it down, and then they blend in a worse metal in it, like tin, or something like that, uh, to that makes the coin actually worth less, because it's not actually now gold or silver. It's mixed in with this, um, or uh, copper, I guess, also, um, is worth less. Um, and then they would sell it in a third place, usually as far away as they could, so in this case, maybe they would say, you know, try and uh, somewhere further away um, in the empire, um, and it worked in the beginning. Like it worked, like yeah, we just created more money. But eventually, because everyone basically started doing this, and people then started finding out that they were doing that, suddenly then. You know the coins become they, they their real value is discovered, and then you know the value of all of this is uh, you know crushed, and people don't accept payment. Soldiers don't expect payment, and stuff like that, and that causes a lot of problem. Luckily for me, I was only already researching the Kippo and Vipa. So hopefully we'll rectify the problem because currently um, we are it's it's not a great system Kippo und Vipper because construction cost is up by 20% repair cost 5% uh, recruitment cost 7% upkeep 10% minus happiness the peasants are not happy so yeah, we uh, want to get rid of that or neutralize it as soon as possible. It's a st it was a stupid policy to begin with, um, but yeah, obviously um, money is needed to um, pay for uh, poor soldiers and whatnot. Uh, with that said, let's continue the end roll on the end turns until spring comes and we can finally start. Finally, we have springtime. It's May 1622 when we are ready to cross the river. However, we've got another problem. And before we head over to that, we can just take a look at Oldenburg. They actually made it. They fought down the Spanish and have now risen to take control of the province once again. Um, the only problem there was that they had to crash the game once. Uh, for, for me to pass that turn when they did that, so uh, definitely gonna attack them and take them out. Um, even though they're not actually part of the quest uh, areas. However, we've got another problem. So, we are allied with the Polish, and they call upon us to declare war on the Swedes, and I didn't really think that much of it, so I said, yes, sure, we'll go ahead and declare war on them. A Swedish army under Carl Gustav Rangel has come down to attack us. And, uh, you know, the armies march, it takes a long time for the armies to march in this mod, so I saw them quite fa fairly soon as they come marching down this road. The problem was, though, every time I tried to recruit troops, the game would crash. So, unfortunately, this is what we have for this battle, and since I've already done so much in this episode already, what I could have done is I guess I could have, instead of recruiting new troops, I could have taken pre-existing troops and 
sped them as soon as possible in riding there. I still don't think we would have made it, unfortunately. But yeah, for some reason it kept crashing as soon as I tried to recruit troops. So as I all as I got the new uh, mercenary recruitment system, I could have recruited mercenaries. But I uh, and uh, that was my idea to get the German mercenaries, 26 accuracy, and I could get four of them before the Swedes arrived, and then I would be at a definite advantage against the Swedish force, as they have only brought six units. And I would get four from the um, garrison, and then I would have an so I would have eight. So I would outnumber them. Uh, looks like it's mostly gunners. I mean, if I recruit, and it went for, it seemingly went for all the units. The, I tried different combinations after I figured out that it was me recruiting that crashed the game. So I recruited some units that weren't new, like the writers. Um, and the Provincial Cavalry, but none of that seemed to have worked. So we're going to have to fight this very hard battle, and I think in the end it kind of works out because I have noticed as I was, cr I've crashed, qu are you just recording this episode? I'd probably crashed, I wouldn't exaggerate if I'd crashed ten times to desktop doing this episode. Um, but I think it works out just because, as I was crashing, I had the time to load up what I've already recorded. And I noticed that I was up to 20 minutes already, and putting a battle like this, where I think the enemy has something like 4,000 men against my 4,000, such a huge battle would drag me past the 30 minute mark, uh, which I tried to set for all my uh, videos, although it often doesn't work. It's been working pretty well for this episode, or for this uh, campaign, I should say, not just this, uh, ep this episode. But enough talking, this is all, now it's almost like filler. Um, I'm not sure, can I recruit the general? I can. There's a high risk of him dying um, in this battle. But it would definitely make it easier for me to actually possibly win. I noticed though, all these generals here, Piccolomini and so on, um, seem to be actual historical generals, so it's not random. I've already recruited Leopold Wilhelm, which get this really nice fancy picture. And uh, he is the one that we're going to send to Sicily. Unless we lose this battle, of course, because then he will be sent to retake it and throw the Swedes out. But now, uh, Raimondo Monte Cucoli. Cucoli. Monte Cucoli. Uh, God. Sorry, Italy. <laughs> Sorry to the pasta people. Gustav Rangel, he's got one l medium pike. Heavy pike, apparently. Looks pretty medium to me. Um, three gunners. One at 15 to a 20. Mine are at 15. So that would... Yeah, they're definitely advantage there. With their cavalry, they've got a general. Me recruiting a general definitely is going to help. And this cannon is definitely going to help. We need to keep the enemy within range of this cannon. It's very accurate, surprisingly accurate compared to other guns, if it's similar to the ones I've had in other garrison battles. Um, enough talking though! Uh, now I'm almost oh, probably over the 30 minutes limit because I've been talking so much. Let's go ahead and have this battle and we'll figure out... Uh, the. I can plan all I want as soon as we come in contact with the enemy, the plan goes out the window. So without further ado... Let's fight this battle. The battle is underway. There isn't much of a deployment here. I only number, the army only number five units. We got our musketeers in front, ready to take on the enemy. And uh, my mortars are about to come into range on these heavy pikes. I don't want to fire on that cavalry unit. Looks like they're going for a flank. And um, they're already called to action, it seems. 
Kinda panic, hold for as long as possible. I could fire on the cavalry, but I'm more confident that I will do uh, more significant and more useful damage on the enemy. Alright, they're gonna ride past us. Good shots. Plenty of good damage down there. They are now within range. Now, mortars, now! Hopefully, we'll be doing significant damage to this unit. The cavalry is brought to a standstill because they can't push through my unit as long as we're firing like that. So that's good. I have ordered you to fire, goddamn you. One of the units fired. Come on, give me an accurate shot. Yes! Although it killed 18 soldiers. Oh, another one. Killed a few more. We've got... But that's only... Th oh, there we go. Another shot is fired. The third one hasn't fired yet. The cavalry is still going on. Right, I would like... If I'd known I had to angle it... Obviously I would have changed my setup. Alright, fire on this unit then. Okay, now we're no longer firing, which is advantage to the enemy. I'm gonna bring in my general, we're gonna fire a pistol, and we're gonna break them down. I think I'm gonna move my entire line. Ooh, pretty good hit there. We got 15 of them. This matchlock infantry. I'm thinking I'm gonna move the entire line. Alright, I'm moving the unit and I'm ordering my general to fire pistols and shoot down the enemy uh, cavalry unit. We're gonna charge. I'm gonna move the gunners and we're gonna switch now to fire on the pikes. Alright, come on, kill that unit. And I'll get the gunners out of there and let the general deal with this. Should work. Come on. Break the bastards. Alright, the Swedes are very slow on the advance, which works perfectly. For my troops, finally, they were broken. Right, you forward. I do have the possibility of... Um, inspire. Ooh, they're marching inside of each other as the... as the... Uh, as it hits. Didn't, ki didn't seem to kill that many. Unfortunately, they only killed pikemen. Another shot. Uh, the thing is, we need to march forward now, I think. If they get too close, they, uh, the cannon has a minimum range. Like, you can't just fire right in front of it. Looks like the enemy's gunners are able to fire ahead of ours. Alright, I think we need to inspire this one to do as much damage on these as possible. You will start to advance, you're losing troops. Oh, I think they've already, I think they're already behind, they can't shoot at them anymore. This is the minimum range, yeah. 
will switch target them to hit the gunners. I'm gonna bring in the general. It's got pretty good accuracy. This unit's gonna take a lot of damage. I'm gonna bring you back a little bit. Allow the general to come in through the side and be able to fire pistols. I think there's a little bit of a height difference there, right? Doing good damage on this unit. I want to get closer here. March forward. Let's hit this one a little bit more. Right, the general is going to ride after, keep harassing this unit. And we keep harassing them. All right. You will hold and start firing. Uh, we kind of split the fire now. These guys are firing down on us here. Keep firing over here. Good. You know, if you bloody well fired at them, we might actually do this. General keeps firing pistol into this. Good shots. Blowing these guys up. I don't dare risk a cavalry charge. Maybe we should start hitting the one up here a little bit. General's out of shot. We'll just keep kiting these guys. What I can do here is possibly charge across. But there is a risk with the enemy general. Oh, we're getting hit. We're getting hit pretty badly here. Also, the uh, Swedish pike units coming after us. Yeah, I think they were, yeah, they were firing at us. Or at the general. If he dies, then uh, there isn't much left. You kind of have to pull back because you're taking a lot of hits. And now I want to bomb you instead. Yeah, they're coming after the general. Which could possibly work. If I charge in here, and uh, or maybe not, hold and fire at them, and then the general will charge. Looks like they're setting up to fire at him. Yep. I'm moving around behind my own unit there. You keep moving away. You guys fire over there. Let's see if we can organize ourselves to charge these guys down. We don't dare risk anything. I inspire the general and then charge. little bit risky there as they were able to send in the pikes. Why aren't you firing anymore? Now you can fire and you will fire as well. Can I fire at the ground then? Fire at anything you stupid mortar. Right, we got the enemy kind of caught in between two lines. 
This is like key to victory. Why aren't you firing, you dumb bastard? Well, now you're firing. That was kind of a fail. I wasted an inspire ability. Right, the pikes are getting close. Well, now when the pikes are kind of locked in combat here, I can try maybe again to do a charge. Oh, they're setting up to fire at him again. I wonder if we have what it takes to kind of charge them. We need to just hold on for a bit so this one can get in. Okay, now you need to pull back. I don't want you to break. We'll do a rally. General comes back. Are we winning? Combat losing slightly. That's not good. But now I can send in the general. And that will probably turn the tide. Winning only slightly is disappointing. Also, my mortars aren't hitting that well anymore. Yeah, now we're turning the fight. Winning decisively. That one's dead. You can move back. The general follows and kills that smaller unit. You'll move there. They're called into an attack. I want to bring my troops further away from the mortar and in well into the line of the fire of the mortar is what I meant to say All right, we've, we've broken the Swedish gunners but their pikes remain and this arquebus air unit remains no the bastards got him the bastards got him This is indeed a black day. I do not. They're oh, they're just. We didn't. We need to get them out here. We need to get them further away from the mortars, so the mortar actually has a chance to fire at them. Bastard kept sniping after my general. And I think we'd probably do a lot better if we were able to get all our troops into order at the same area, right? We're probably the general is the one that's furthest away, so he's probably the easiest target to fire at. Looks like they're kind of combining to go after this one. Right. The further the closer they get here, so any unit that gets beyond here, actually we should hold fire. And wait for any unit to get within distance there. Yes! Good hit. Right, we've set up new lines. Are these guys going after what I think they're going after? Without the mortar, I don't think I can win. Because with them we don't have enough 
to kill um, their pikes. But I do have a chance here. We all, they assassin, assass, assassinated my general. I'm going to do the same to them. Yeah, they started firing at the mortar. The mortar... The angle though is pretty good. And the mortar might continue to be able to fire for quite a while. And if I can get down the pikes... We have a much greater chance of victory. They're not really firing the pistols or anything, so I think I can move closer here. And it also might trigger these guys to uh, actually uh, attack in a greater fashion. Bring forwards the general. They're down to 80 men now. Down to 11 of this unit. Yeah, the angle. They've placed themselves in such a bad angle here. So they're not really ge getting those shots in. Neither are we, though. I currently have 200 men firing on the enemy general, and we're unable to uh, bloody kill him. They have yet to kill a single mortar crew. They're down to six. Okay, you need to pull back. You need to reorganize. And you need to reorganize. We can have our... What's left of the bodyguard charge the enemy. Enemy general just killed some of my bodyguard just by standing close to them. He has killed two of our bodyguard. Okay, now we're starting to do quite a bit of damage on him. Yes! We need to kill him as well. Do not let Wrangel escape. Or maybe we will let him escape. Shoot him! Yes! The musketeer realized they were in a pickle and uh, are sending their uh, troops closer to ours. And then we can kite them into the mortar range. And this unit's starting to have enough. They've been uh, constantly bombarded. <coughs> so it looks like, even though I had really shitty odds, I think the... I was just about to say the Swedes look like they're possibly going to leave. But I'll have to take that back because... Uh, they are still here. They're gonna get a better angle on the mortar now. And they could possibly uh, end up killing it. So we're not ready yet to... Well, the, uh, the game wants to declare me victorious. Need just a little bit, just a good hit. Kill a little bit more. This one basically doesn't have any shot left. Or it I think it has like one shot each for each man or something like that. Probably less. You can't even see the marker for uh, the amount of shots I had. Yeah. It's one of those where they thought they had ammo left. Turns out they didn't. What are you reloading over? You don't even have sh any shots. Yeah, 
Alright, this one still has shots left. I think our best chance. Uh, yeah, we are trying to kill you. More or less point blank range. Plus a good mortar. Finally. Right, we'll uh, reorganize to you, try and get the last one then. This one is gonna get difficult just because I can't hit it with a mortar. And it seems like they're clever enough that they're not going to move outside the range. Well, what I'm thinking is this one's going to move up, start shooting. This going to melee charge from... Uh, hopefully, I'll get it so they can get from uh, an angle each. So I can get one coming in there, one coming in there. And then the general coming in from another one. From another angle. You know what we're gonna do? That's I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna send these guys away. We're gonna get these within range and then I'm gonna win. Um, I'm gonna call it the victory here unless we see us, we see each other again on the campaign map. I uh, will call this a victory right now.
What a battle. Um, with only the garrison troops, I was able to defeat the Swedish force. Um, only ten of them made it out of there. Two famous generals died as well. Um, highest kills goes to the mortar, so that's really the star of the show. Followed by one of the militia units that was able to uh, shoot and stab 227. General killed 81, but probably the morale that he boosted the force with was um, more of a winning factor than the people he killed. And as much as we will uh, lament the loss of Monte Cucullini, we uh, celebrate the fact that we get to keep our province. Wonderful. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to recruit something eventually that we can uh, keep the province safe for longer. Otherwise I guess I'd just uh, reroute some of the troops from Austria. So, as much as we've been uh, calling for the Battle of uh, Hanover, we're going to have to wait yet another episode for that one. So, without dragging this any further, I will say, as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.